Good morning and welcome to worship uh, here at First Lutheran Church. This week we are on live Zoom together uh, and it's good. I have to admit I do enjoy this style of worship in the sense that we're all together in the same format and I can see you all. I can scroll through and uh, so behave on your screens because the pastor is watching. Much like I get the privilege when we're in person and you're out in the pews, I get to see everyone and when you're in the pews everyone sees me but uh, it's a unique privilege uh, uh, that uh, worship leaders get to experience. Uh, if you're a visitor today, whether it's live or watching the recording version of this, uh, know that you're fully welcome to participate in our faith community, uh, whoever you are, whatever your walk of life or whatever your identity might be. Uh, announcements today would be on our next slide there. We want to give a shout out to Joe and Deanne, who are our greeters today. Uh, shot taken in their back on their porch, probably, I think, or backyard, probably their porch. Uh, up in, uh, in over the Rhine. Uh, so thank you for sharing that photo of welcome there. Today's a communion Sunday, so you might want to hop up now and go grab wine, bread, juice, crackers, uh, so we can celebrate Holy Communion later on in our service together. Uh, on October 3rd, next Sunday, uh, I'm going to ask Matthew to make an announcement about uh, pet blessing in Washington Park. Yes, thank you, Pastor Brian. So next Sunday, we're going to have worship either on Zoom as normal, if you prefer, or in Washington Park. Uh, and if you come to Washington Park, uh, we also just encourage you to bring your pet along with you um, for a pet blessing. And so if you would like to submit photos of your pets so that they can be shown on the Zoom, um, on the Zoom screen, then uh, please send those pictures to me at worship at firstlutherancincy.org. And also include their name as well, because uh, Cindy and I are going to, um, Cindy's been preparing to work on some treats and we're going to hand them out to all the animals that show up. So look forward to receiving those pictures and, uh, and having a pet blessing. And my first thought there was, will there be treats for the humans? The pets get a treat, uh, but I'd sure like one. So Cindy, maybe just make sure you include a human treat for me on that one there. So thank you, Matthew, on that. Uh, next Saturday, or this coming Saturday, is the OTR 5K uh, in Over the Rhine. That was, has not happened because of pandemic, so it's good to have that event. Normally that happens in May as a kind of a summer kickoff, but uh, this one's happening in October this year. Uh, Jeff Sanger and Elizabeth Gilbert are meeting. Uh, I was going to meet and be part of, you know, join their walking effort or running, whatever they're going to do. But then I uh, remembered that it's the Alzheimer's walk on that day as well. At the very same time along the riverfront and Kimberly Russell is, uh, uh, she's a volunteer with that and she's uh, passionate about uh, Alzheimer's and raising uh, funds for that. And with Rachel's mother uh, having the Alzheimer's disease, Rachel and I will be walking uh, in the Alzheimer's walk at the same time as the OTR walk. So I think the bigger message is that there's an opportunity to get out and participate and be in the community. Uh, it's uh, early October, beautiful time uh, to be with your first Lutheran friends or, and also to support whatever it might be happening in our community. So uh, reach out to Jeff and Elizabeth if you want to connect with them for the OTR walk. If you want, otherwise just walk it. It's fun in the neighborhood or uh, you can also reach out to myself or Kimberly Russell, if you want to somehow get connected with the Alzheimer's Walk next Saturday. Uh, following worship today, there's gonna to be a ministry information session. You uh, should have received an email that kind of gave you a heads up. I also talked about it Wednesday as a possibility that uh, we, we learned the news that we cannot, uh, the transept uh, has been gracious in providing hospitality for us for a few months, but they have events uh, that are, are requiring them to have their space for those events. That's what they are, event venue, and, and uh, it's good to see that those events are picking back up again. So uh, we are not able to return to the transept for in-person worship. So we are shifting to uh, Philippus United Church of Christ up on McMicken at the end of Ray Street, and that our first service with them will be uh, October 10th. So uh, next after worship today, we'll give you the details on that. There'll be more details to follow, but uh, in-person worship will be joint worship with them starting October 10th, but we'll share the details in its fullness after worship today. So stick around for that. It's an exciting ministry opportunity uh, that we can uh, partner with them uh, in a new, new worship style setting, uh, new way, as well as we'll still be offering Zoom worship just to be mindful of that as well. Uh, leading worship today, myself, intern Tyler. Uh, intern Tyler, if you wouldn't mind, uh, I want to acknowledge your, you were, where you were last week. Intern Tyler was up in uh, Luther Seminary. So intern Tyler, say something about uh, your week. 
Absolutely. So I spent a, a week up in St. Paul at Luther Seminary and uh, for a week of intensive classes, and it is exactly how it sounds. <laughs> We're sitting in a room uh, about six-ish hours a day uh, talking about something very specific. Uh, I had two classes. I've got um, a theology class, so we were talking about triune God and uh, in the world, so how God shows up in the world, and then uh, taking a class on the epistles, so the, the readings, uh, the letters of the New Testament that follow the, the Gospels and the Acts story. Um, and this is the first time I've been able to see people in my cohort for um, in person since our interview day almost two years ago. So this was a very special time for me to be able to fellowship with them and uh, and and to be with them. And uh, of course, I'm also happy to be back here too with all of you too. And yes, we are happy to have you back too. Uh, definitely uh, miss having you around. Uh, when you're not here, uh, you are sure let's notice. So uh, thank you for your ministry and partnership with us there. And we have Priscilla Elgersma, Priscilla Giveaway, you are a worship assistant. And if your internet glitches out, then we've got someone ready to jump in and take over on that. Dan is in Portland and Dan, happy birthday tomorrow. Dan is gonna be the big three zero. He's leaving the twenties. He's gonna be all grown up finally. And Dan, uh, spotlight yourself and show what your beautiful bride, uh, uh, wonderful bride, Randy, did for you uh, on for your birthday highlight. Uh, yeah, so uh, I woke up yesterday to a surprise. You can see things hanging up behind me. Uh, Randy worked with uh, my my parents and got basically photos from my entire life. I printed them all out and then hung them up. Um, and then I'm going to shift my camera. You can see they are all, they're everywhere, uh, all over, all over the house, um, baby pictures, adult pictures. And, uh, so it's been really a blessing to be able to reflect, uh, not just on the turning of the century, but kind of all of my accomplish it, all of my accomplishments, uh, the last decade, my entire life. Um, it's, it's, uh, been really a blessing. So. So happy, happy birthday to you and uh, you. enjoy your, your uh, day tomorrow. Uh, Matthew Mokun Lee, uh, music leader, and Matthew will have a great deal to say after worship when we talk about worship with Philippus uh, UCC. So uh, thank you to our worship leaders today. Uh, some prayer concerns, pastoral concerns to share would be, uh, there's, there's several people uh, we want to lift up in prayer. Uh, one is, uh, one significant one is Don Thompson had a stroke uh, about uh, two weeks ago now, I guess and came back and is not doing well. So uh, just we gotta keep Don in your, our prayers um, and, and, and uh, be mindful of that. Uh, and I will, I'm in touch with the family to continue to share updates as to see how, where things progress. Uh, so prayers for Don. And if I'll say more about Don during the sermon today as well. Uh, other prayers would be Gabrielle. Gabrielle is having wave Gabrielle. So people can, uh, we want to hold you up in prayer because you still, I assume, have your surgery scheduled for this on the 29th, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, we will uh, continue to pray for you. And then please let us know if there's anything that we can do uh, for you in preparation. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. yep. And uh, so the other thing would be, uh, I'm trying to think, Ed, Ed Clossie is, uh, uh, he's here today. So Ed, we got you in our prayers. Pastor Larry showed up in the newsletter as having had an emergency surgery. So prayer for him, uh, but we're not sure what happened there. So Pastor Larry, uh, Susie uh, Ashford is with her mother or with her oldest daughter uh, and is, continues to recover from COVID, uh, but seems to be doing well as in good spirits there. So, uh, so several people to continue to lift up in prayer uh, in our faith community. With that, then I invite you now, we'll shift gears and we will turn our thoughts and hearts to our time of worship, which begins with confession. And I'll ask and turn tired to, to lead us in that. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose teaching is life, whose presence is sure, and whose love is endless. Amen. Let us confess our sins to the one who welcomes us with an open heart. God, our comforter, like lost sheep, we have gone astray. We gaze upon abundance and see scarcity. We turn our faces away from injustice and oppression. We exploit the earth with our apathy and greed. 
Free us from our sin, gracious God. Listen when we call out to you for help. Lead us by your love to love our neighbors as ourselves. Amen. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. By the gift of grace in Christ Jesus, God makes you righteous. Receive with glad hearts the forgiveness of all your sins. Amen. We join in singing, uh, How Small Our Span of Life, O God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray the prayer of the day. Generous God, your Son gave his life that we might come to peace with you. Give us a share of your Spirit, and in all we do, empower us to bear the name of Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord. Amen. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus teaches his disciples about ministry that involves service and sacrifice. His disciples are slow to realize that these words apply to them as well as to others. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, Do not stop him, for no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able to soon after will be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. For truly, I tell you, 
whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose the reward. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for you if a great millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than to have two hands and go to hell, to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than to have two feet and to be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into hell, where their worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if salt has lost its saltiness, how can you season it? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Dear friends in Christ, uh, grace and peace to you. The image there is of Don Thompson. And Don is uh, waving there. This picture was taken back in August when I visited him. Uh, when, at the time, he uh, was able to communicate uh, uh, fairly well, and uh, uh, we could share some stories and uh, uh, talk about the happenings of the ministry of the church, but also of life. And uh, you know, unfortunately, now he's not able to do that. He's not able to communicate. He can understand entirely what you're saying and who you are when I walked in to greet him. Uh, but he's entered into that phase of life where uh, he's not able to communicate back. And uh, that is the reality. And on the journey that we all are, we are all mortal and uh, uh, share a same destiny, if you will, uh, to be sure. And in some moments like this, our faith becomes uh, more poignant. Uh, more significant uh, when we consider uh, the journey of life and, and uh, uh, where that ends. Uh, for Don, though, it's interesting, as I mentioned Don's name, I take it for granted that everyone knows Don Thompson, uh, but that's not the reality. Uh, it's a sign that I've been around First Lutheran a long time, I guess. I'm starting my eighth year here, maybe by a show of hands. Who here uh, wave, wave if you know Don Thompson. So let's see how many hands are waving. Okay, a fair number there, but I see several hands that are not waving. Uh, but Don Thompson uh, began attending First Lutheran in about 1960, I believe. So that's how many years ago? My goodness, that's that's long, that's long before our 30-year-old uh, digital sacristan was born. So uh, maybe twice as long. So that's tw uh, 61 years ago that Don has been an active participant and member of the First Lutheran Faith Community. And he quickly became involved with the life of the church. Uh, and I remember him telling stories and, and not only it's neat to have stories told to you by someone, but then find the actual evidence of that is he was a Sunday school superintendent. And as I clean out different rooms in the church, I found note card boxes with the attendance records that Don's name was on as the superintendent. So all these little cards, he dutifully kept track of what kids were there on uh, the Thursday night and Sunday mornings for the ministry uh, offerings. Don's fingerprint was also on our, our financial reports uh, as the treasurer of the church for 35 years, the position that Craig Holliker now holds. So for 35 years, Don made sure the bills were paid. And uh, if Don uh, was able to talk to us now, he'd say, and that wasn't always easy to do, <laughs> to pay the bills. Uh, there were many years where they wondered how the bills would be paid, uh, but yet he still kept his faith and was encouraged uh, by the ministry of the church at First Lutheran. Don was also a significant factor in the lives of many people of the church. Don had his car, which served as a uh, Sunday school bus, we could say. Uh, he would pile kids into the kids and adults into the car. Whoever needed a ride, Don was there to pick them up and bring them to church, uh, whoever it was. Uh, brought, it provided him deep joy, and that was his ministry, was to bring people to Sunday school and to worship. And then when he no longer could drive, 
the favor was paid back. Uh, he was picked up. Uh, maybe it was Kathy and Mary Larsgaard, uh, or perhaps uh, quite often it was Nicholas Calvert uh, who would bring him to church. And so Don was appreciated and uh, he was a regular fixture uh, in our worship services, but also he was there for the Monday meal. Don always loved to be around the community when we gathered together to share in food and meals that way. Don is waving in this picture, and I like the image there. It's an image of First Lutheran. I'm waving to you. Uh, you are now the stewards of the gospel. You are now the stewards of this gospel, and, and I can testify that that's not easy work. It's not easy to be the steward of the gospel at any church, and First Lutheran's no exception to that. Uh, but in his wave and in his message would be, it might not always be easy, but yet have faith, have confidence. I can testify that God will bless you. You will journey through whatever challenges might come at you. And in this case, it's, it's a combination of a, a one-two challenge with a building and a pandemic uh, coming together, whatever that looks like. But the community should not be overwhelmed by, in today's gospel language, a stumbling block. Jesus talks about a stumbling block being put in front of people, these little ones, these technons, these children, but people may be new beginners to faith, whatever language. Uh, but the idea I would like to lift up is we in our lives encounter stumbling blocks quite often. For example, in our relationships, uh, Christina and Michael Patterson, I uh, had a picture on Facebook celebrating their 18th wedding anniversary and looked very happy. And, and Rachel and I have been married for many years and uh, very happy in marriage. But anyone who's been married for more than a week, I think, uh, could probably testify to the fact that in relationships, there are stumbling blocks. It could be parenting skills or styles, uh, could be extended family. Uh, how many of us have encountered situations where the extended family and uh, uh, upcoming holiday, Thanksgiving or Christmas, is the source of great stress? Uh, and I suspect most couples, uh, when they come together and try and merge two different families, find that to be a challenge. There are stumbling blocks that come across us in life that disrupt our lives and bring unto us and upon us. Uh, stress. And in this language of the stumbling block, Jesus uses the example of it'd be better to lose an eye or a hand or a foot or to have a millstone around your neck. And I, how I translate that is being in some situations in life, I would quite often have the thought I would rather give an eye than to be in the situation I am right now at this point in time. The message is that the stumbling block is causing a disruption in the desired life that God has for all of us. The image at the beginning of the service during the confession and forgiveness and then when the absolutions proclaim that Dan put up there during faith formation club with the kids today, we went through the images, the artistic images that Dan picked and selected for the slides for our worship service. And at the beginning of each service, we start with confession and forgiveness. And then we hear these words that we are forgiven. And there's an image of a man standing on a rock with his hands up. And he just looks happy. He looks glad. He looks, wow, the weight of the world has been taken off my shoulders because I confess my sins and God says, you are forgiven. That is not going to define you. There's that image there. Thanks, Dan. That feeling of release and relief, the abundant waters of God flowing down to bring new life, restoration, a physicality that says, I am free of that. The stumbling blocks that come along in our lives whether they be at school or work or in our neighborhood or community or related even to a health or an issue or an addiction can drag us down in ways that are contrary to the desires of what God has for us. They can be things that we allow to come upon us that are as bad as having the loss of a foot or a hand or an eye or a millstone tied around your neck. 
one friend of mine used the example of we create our own personal hell when we do these things. We create our own personal hell and it's that bad. So we'd be better off uh, being rid of that and seeking out freedom and release from that. The language in confession forgiveness is you come to relieve, uh, bring release to the captive and freedom to those who are in bondage. The call to be stewards of the gospel as Don and as Wave is kind of, I think, hinting you can just see a lifetime of ministry at first. We can think of the stumbling blocks. If you've been around first for a long time, I know Margaret's on today. Margaret can recall lots of stumbling blocks over the years from 1960 on, the years Don's been around. And the amount of challenges the ministry has encountered are numerous. And the challenges are that are not often talked about or lifted up. They're forgotten. Instead, we remember those things that we celebrate, those things that lift up the joys. We don't lift up the sorrows of our experiences, but yet we can be confident that Don in 60 years encountered many sorrows at first. Lutheran Cindy's on today too. Cindy, uh, just 25 years, Cindy. So you got a ways to catch up to Don, but you too can testify uh, to certainly the joys of First Lutheran Ministry, but also the sorrows and how restoration and coming back together is a story of joy. And so we will be going into worship with Philippus UCC in two weeks. And we look at there, we will enter, be entering alongside of them and coming alongside of them in ministry at a significant point in time in their 125 plus years of ministry there. Because 2022 is, had been named as their last year and they will be closing. So we will be joining with the community in worship that has every right to be discouraged and feel like a stumbling block has been thrown in front of them. But when Matthew and I met with Pastor Sam and Terry, their music director, and Matthew will be able to testify this to the end, I did not have a sense that we were meeting with the people that were discouraged and feel like there was a stumbling block placed in their path. Instead, rather, they met with us with open arms and hearts and minds and with joy saying, come be with us. We will be a worship and faith community together. We will not just provide you hospitality. You are us and we are you. And we're going to worship that way. To me, I feel that we are going to be blessed in this time of worship with this faith community. As we come together in uncertain times for both our communities, but yet we still come together in faith to worship, to hear the words of confession and forgiveness. Perhaps the language won't be quite exactly the same as we're used to because they have a different liturgical tradition, but it certainly will be familiar. And the message will still be consistent and the same. Dear friends in Christ, as we reflect on Don's life and ministry, I encourage you to be mindful of the witness he gave, one that encouraged that each of us be connected with the gospel that is good news, one that is free of stumbling blocks, or if there is a stumbling block, helps restore us into our life together. Let us pray. Almighty and gracious God, we give you thanks that we can come together and worship this day to hear your word proclaimed. We give you thanks for Don Thompson, his life and witness and his ministry. Uh, we ask that you be with him and comfort him on his journey in these days. Uh, may he be cared for. May we follow his example as one of your saints, many saints uh, in our lives, uh, whether at First Lutheran or other parts of our faith journey throughout life. May we follow his example of trusting in you. Be with us on this day as we continue our worship together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. With the whole church, let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. May children and heirs of God's promise, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. We pray for the church and its ministry, bless the newly baptized, and encourage them in their journey of faith. Sustain all members of the body of Christ in lives of prayer, service, and worship. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for natural wonders of your creation, the mighty Ohio River, the Great Lakes, the Appalachian Mountains. Restore damaged forests, waterways, and natural habitats, and lead us to be good stewards of what you have provided. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those in authority. Give them wise minds and compassionate hearts. Strengthen in them a desire to protect the vulnerable and care for those under, underserved. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the people of Philippus Church. Bless their worship this morning. We give thanks for their hospitality as they welcome us into their community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are in need of healing, especially Don, Gabrielle, Ed, Ava, David, Pastor Larry, Susie, and others we name silently in our hearts at this time. Restore all who are in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts known only to you, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. At this point in our service is when we gather our offering. Uh, there's a QR code on the screen there. You can scan that and make a contribution to First Lutheran via a check or credit card. You can also mail your offerings to the physical address of the church, First Lutheran Church, 1208 Race Street, Cincinnati, Ohio, 45202. Thank you for your faithful stewardship uh, during uh, our, our times together. You know, it's Sundays are Sabbath days, and uh, we are called to give thanks, uh, uh, first fruits gift to God in thanksgiving for what God has offered us. And uh, that doesn't change no matter what the circumstances are. So whether we are worshiping together or we're worshiping on Zoom, uh, we still have the opportunity to say thank you, God, because uh, in the midst of uh, pandemics, uh, God continues to bless us. And so uh, we give thank you to God for that. So with that, I invite uh, Priscilla now to lead us in our offering prayer. Let us pray. God of abundance, you cause stream to break forth in the desert and manna to rain from the heavens. Accept the gifts you have first given us. Unite them with the offering of our lives to nourish the world you love so dearly. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We continue our service together with the uh, Liturgy of Holy Communion. The Lord be with you and also with you. 
Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and almighty. Merc you are indeed holy, almighty and merciful God. You are most holy and great is the majesty of your glory. You so love the world that you gave your only son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. We give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, blessed it, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is a kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All who hunger and thirst come the table is ready. I invite you to take your bread or crackers, take and eat the body of Christ given for you. And take and drink the blood of Christ shed for you. And for those of you not communing, children or others, children of God, know that you are loved and you are a child, a child of God forever. Amen. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Lord of life, in the gift of your body and blood, you turn the crumbs of our faith into a feast of salvation. Send us forth into the world with shouts of joy, bearing witness to the abundance of your love in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Receive now the blessing. Uh, one note before the blessing, since we talked about it, I didn't, we didn't have a chance to share this with the youth during the faith formation, but this artistic presentation of the blessing language here 
uh, as you look at this imagery, uh, Christ's body bringing new life to a suffering world and that drought stricken land there somehow has a green plant growing out of it. And I think that is the message of, of our faith there. So receive this blessing then. People of God, you are Christ's body bringing new life to a suffering world. The Holy Trinity, one God, bless you now and forever. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Before we sing our final hymn, um, last November, there was a supplement hymnal uh, to the ELW that was put out called All Creation Sings. And um, it's a great and inclusive um, su supplementary hymnal. And today we're going to sing an old spiritual called Every Time I Feel the Spirit. So some of you may recall this piece or this, uh, this spiritual. And if not, this will be something unfamiliar to you, but I, pro I think you'll catch on by the end of it. So uh, as we join together in singing, All Creation Sings, hymn number four 942, Every Time I Feel the Spirit. Go in peace. The living word dwells in you. Thanks be to God. Thanks for the great sending picture there, Joe and Deanne. It looks wonderful there. I love the smile. So uh, Joe and Deanne are live on Facebook. We'll wave there. There you go. There I see you there. Uh, give a wave there. There we go. There's our senders off there. Uh, thank you for joining us for worship today. Uh, a reminder, stay around for uh, information session on uh, just information about worship with Philippus UCC, learn a little bit about their church, but also the details of what worship will look like and how that'll happen. So uh, otherwise, uh, we look forward to seeing you on Midweek Prayer at noon on Facebook Live and next Sunday in Wash next Saturday morning, either at the Alzheimer's Block or the OTR 5K. And then Sunday uh, in Washington Park for Pet Blessing. And also we'll still have a Zoom offering as well during that time. Go in peace, share the love of God. Thanks be to God.